everyone, my name is Lexi. I'm a naturalist with Baltimore Woods Nature Center in Marcellus, New York. When we think of a city, many things come to mind. Tall buildings, busy streets, honking cars. But today, I want to focus on neighborhoods. There are many neighborhoods in Syracuse, including Eastwood and Westcott. Which neighborhood do you live in? We may live in different neighborhoods, but they all have more than just people living in them. Today we are at Elmwood Park in the south side of Syracuse and we're going to explore Furnace Brook and some of our non-human neighbors that call it home. This small shallow stream flows through the entire park. Many people enjoy picnicking, walking along, and swimming in the brook. It's certainly one of the highlights of Elmwood Park. Green spaces such as this park are an important part of the city, not only for us to enjoy, but also for our non-human neighbors that live here. When we take a walk around Elmwood Park, we're taking a stroll through a neighborhood, even though it may not look like it. When we think of ecosystems, it's really just a fancy word for communities of non-living and living things. Ecosystems are like neighborhoods. Within ecosystems, we find habitats or an animal's home. The habitat that you live in is your home. Each home could be different and each one has different people living in them but when they come together, they make a neighborhood. Much like your homes make up a neighborhood, different plants, animals, and non-living things make up an ecosystem. But don't be fooled. People, plants, and animals are deeply connected. Take a look outside your window or go for a walk and you're sure to catch a glimpse at all of your non-human neighbors. Birds, butterflies, bugs, and squirrels are but a handful of all the neighbors you live amongst. Some of those neighbors live in the water, like the creatures that live here in Furnace Brook. Furnace Brook flows through Elmwood Park and is a favorite amongst park visitors. You may think there isn't much going on in this small river, but think again. Furnace Brook is an ecosystem containing many habitats that support living and breathing creatures. In order to support life, waterways like this one need to be clean. You may not enjoy cleaning your room, but it feels a lot better to live in when it is clean, doesn't it? The animals living in and around the water feel the same way. But how do we know the water is clean? There are people whose job it is to test water quality or to see how clean the water is. They visit the stream or lake that they want to test and collect water samples. Then the scientists use water quality testing kits to determine a variety of things such as the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water or the presence of certain pollutants. This method of testing water quality is certainly the most accurate way to tell if a body of water is clean or polluted. I've got a secret to share. You can test water quality too, without all the special equipment. As I said before, most creatures living here need clean water. If the water was polluted, do you think we would find many animals? Probably not, right? Why don't we go into Furnace Brook and search for some creatures? They will tell us if the water is clean, kind of clean, or polluted. I brought a few friends to help me look for aquatic macroinvertebrates, or water bugs. These animals will help us find out if the water is polluted or clean. Grace and Rand are using dip nets to scoop rocks and hopefully creatures from the bottom of the brook. If we find anything, we'll put it into a bin filled with water scooped up from the brook. Whoa, look at what Rand caught. This is a big crane fly larva. They are pollution sensitive, so they need very clean water to live in. What a cool find. Sometimes creatures cling to the bottom of rocks. And look, it's a scud. These little shrimp are somewhat pollution sensitive, meaning they can live in clean and semi-clean water, but not really polluted water. On this rock, we see black fly larvae. They are pollution tolerant which means they can live in almost any kind of water, including very polluted water. Some caddisflies build themselves homes out of rocks or sticks, but this caddisfly is free living. The funny little dance is actually how caddisfly nymphs absorb oxygen from the water. They need very clean water to survive. Oh, and there goes a little fish. 
Look at this healthy mayfly nymph. Like many of the pollution-sensitive creatures, they breathe through gills. And here comes a stonefly nymph. They also need very clean water to live in. It's a really good sign that we're finding pollution-sensitive creatures. You wouldn't find these friends in water that was polluted. Many of the insects we found today are in the larval or nymph stage of their life cycles. Eventually they will go through metamorphosis or complete change and become flying adults. This rock is covered in shed exoskeletons from these stonefly adults. Wow, we found a lot of creatures, including many pollution-sensitive aquatic insects. What do we think? Is the stream clean, kind of clean, or polluted? Well, a water quality test would tell us exactly how clean it is, but we can make a really good guess that the water is pretty clean. All of the creatures we found today call Furnace Brook and Elmwood Park home. So how can we be good neighbors to the animals and plants that are part of this amazing ecosystem? Well, an easy and simple way to help is to not litter. Anything you bring to the park leaves with you. That includes candy wrappers, plastic water bottles, and plastic bags. These items can harm our creature neighbors, so let's try to respect their space, much like you would respect your neighbors. Organizations across the city are also doing their part to keep our waterways clean. Save the Rain works in and around the city of Syracuse to help reduce the impacts of pollution in places like Furnace Brook. Save the Rain is an organization dedicated to stormwater management and they work to reduce pollution to Onondaga Lake through its tributaries. A tributary is a river or stream that flows into a larger body of water like a lake or an ocean. Save the Rain employs many different strategies to help keep tributaries like Furnace Brook clean, which in turn helps keep Onondaga Lake clean. Save the Rain has worked with Baltimore Woods Nature in the City for over a decade to help teach third graders in the Syracuse City School District with a field trip to Furnace Brook. Through the field trips, both organizations hope to instill a love for local ecosystems and the creatures that call them home while giving the students the tools to protect them. Baltimore Woods and Save the Rain are working together in an effort to raise the next generation of environmental stewards, people who care for the environment and actively work to protect it. To learn more about Save the Rain and the many infrastructure projects they have implemented across the city of Syracuse, visit savetherain.us. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning about Furnace Brook and the creatures that call it home. Together, we can help keep our community green spaces clean for our human and non-human neighbors. Visit BaltimoreWoods.org to learn more about our Nature in the City program or check out our social media for more nature education videos like this one.